This is Hyperloop. You might have heard of it. It's a mode of transport that combines near vacuum tubes with magnetically levitating trains to create almost frictionless ultra high speed travel. Or it would be if it existed. See, while the idea has been around for centuries, a 2013 white paper by Elon Musk sparked a slew of student competitions and startups, all trying to turn Hyperloop into a reality. Now, there's way too many players for me to name all of them, but you might recognise names like Virgin Hyperloop, Hyperloop TT, and The Boring Company. These companies have received millions of dollars in investment. They've designed mock-ups, some have built test tracks, and one has even carried passengers. Yes! So, with the technology being mentioned in both President Biden's infrastructure bill and EU sustainability studies, does that mean that Hyperloops are about to become a reality? Well, maybe one day. But right now, it's not quite there yet. So, as always, we're going to look at where the companies are right now, where they want to be, and then examine what they need to do to get there. But let's start with where these companies want to be. Their aim is to use the Hyperloop, which they say can travel at speeds of over 700 miles an hour, to connect distant cities in record time at affordable prices. Hyperloop TT, founded in California in 2013, say that their technology could slash the travel time from Chicago to Cleveland to around 32 minutes, twice as fast as flying. And Virgin Hyperloop, backed by Virgin founder Richard Branson, say they could connect Chicago to Columbus in 45 minutes, compared to a six-hour drive. And it's not just the US. Companies like Netherlands-based Hart, who in 2021 received around $17.4 million in funding from the European Union, plan to deploy their technology across the globe, from Europe to the Middle East. Now, while none of these companies say exactly how much tickets would cost, many say their aim is to make tickets accessible and affordable. But that's all in the future. And right now, those routes and ticket prices are all hypothetical. For now, these companies are still trying to prove that their technology can actually work. To do that, they've struck up partnerships with engineering heavyweights, the likes of Airbus, Tata and Hitachi. They've secured funding, some in the tens of millions, others in the hundreds of millions of dollars, from state and private investors. Many have worked with their local governments to help shape standards and regulations, and some have signed provisional agreements with companies, cities and countries to further develop the technology. And some have developed initial test tracks. Hyperloop TT has constructed a 320 metre test track in Toulouse in the south of France. And Virgin Hyperloop have also developed a test track, a 500 metre run in Nevada, which has actually carried test passengers. Hart have also worked with a Dutch province to begin construction of the European Hyperloop Centre, a collaborative testing ground. And while the boring company has dug a series of tunnels around Las Vegas and California, so far the only thing that's carried passengers down them is a fleet of Teslas. Though the company did tweet that Hyperloop testing would begin later this year, and it looks like they're hiring Hyperloop engineers. I tried to speak to the boring company, but they didn't respond to my requests for comment. So if some of these companies have been working with governments on regulation, received funding and constructed test tracks, why aren't we quite there yet? Well, this technology is still unproven at scale, and as such, there's some safety concerns. Like how to evacuate passengers from a near vacuum tube, or how to avoid a collision between two carriages travelling in short intervals if the lead carriage develops a fault. There's also concerns that earthquakes and temperature fluctuations could cause sections of Hyperloop tubes to misalign over long distances, and that could lead to accidents. Even if those issues are addressed, some experts also worry that rapid acceleration in a windowless chamber could make passengers feel sick. Now, when I've spoken to these companies, they've told me that they're working on solutions for these problems. Hyperloop TT, for example, say that they have worked with partners to develop safety isolation valves that would isolate portions of the track in an emergency. And when I spoke to Spanish Hyperloop firm Zeleros, they told me they were exploring using different materials and different pressures to make the system safer over long distances. Even if those safety concerns are addressed, there's still the matter of getting agreement and funding for what would essentially be a huge, years-long infrastructure development project. And it's that that's left Hyperloop in a bit of a chicken and egg situation. See, these companies say that the best way to prove that their technology works and is safe is to build it at scale. But doing that would take time and money. And as this tech is unproven, right now some companies told me there was a reluctance to invest. However, these companies may have a way to demonstrate that some of their concepts can work without having to move passengers. 
by moving cargo instead. Pretty much all of these companies have plans to deploy their technology at ports in the coming years. That could give them the first chance to demonstrate whether or not this will actually work, though it might not answer all of those passenger safety questions. So what's it going to take to turn Hyperloop from a computer rendering into your future commute? Well first these companies are going to have to prove that their technology can economically move cargo. Once they've done that, they're going to have to demonstrate that it can be safe for passengers. After that, they're going to need backing from cities and governments to deploy their huge infrastructure projects at scale. Finally, there's just the small matter of securing the millions needed to build even a single mile of Hyperloop, and then convince passengers to hop aboard. If all that happens, then maybe, just maybe, one day you might be able to travel across America in record time without ever leaving the ground.